Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey White. I am a manager at PricewaterhouseCoopers and I work in our audit sector and I work on audits for large public clients. Um, I've been at PwC for about seven years and it's been a job that I've really enjoyed. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining me for this session today. Today we're gonna to talk about the importance of saving money and the importance of creating a budget. And so we're gonna kind of walk through why you need a budget, how to create a budget, and then most importantly, once you have that, how to make sure that you stay on budget. How can you be sure that you'll have enough money when you're away from home? Um, when you go off to college, right, there's more things to pay for than just the school itself. You'll also have living expenses, um, personal fund expenses, things like that. So have you thought about making sure that you'll have enough money when you go off to school to pay for all the items that you'll need? Should you get credit cards when you're at college? I'm not sure if any of you guys have credit cards already, but if it's you know, something that you've thought about when you go off to school, um, you know the pros and cons of getting a credit card when you're at college. Should I focus on being the best looking and best dressed on campus? Um, there's obviously a slight financial impact related to that. You would need to spend money on clothes and things of that nature. So is it something that you thought about where you want to have expenses in your budget related to clothing? And then kind of in relation to that, are you too cool to shop at thrift stores? Thrift stores obviously have clothing options that can be much cheaper than if you were to buy something new. Should I allow my roommate in college to wear and use my things? Um, something that's very easy to do among friends is to share the items that you might have in your room, whether that be clothing, your coffee maker, whatever it is, but always remembering that if they lose it, if they break it, it might be something that would cost money to replace. Will I meet my friends and go out? Again, just thinking of other areas in college that might have a financial impact, if you go out to movies, sporting events, dinner, et cetera, all of those things will cost money. If I have a car and my friends don't, will I be the one to drive them around? Um, it's pretty often that a lot of kids don't go to school with cars. So if you do have a car and you wanna drive your friends around, thinking through how you'll be paying for that gas money, will you be asking friends to spin or will you be taking on the expense by yourself? Should I help a friend and loan them money? Um, just again, something to think about if you have friends, you're going to the dining hall, they're out of cash and they really want a coffee. Is that something that you're willing to loan them money for or, or not? And then lastly, you just met the person of your dreams at school. Should you be the one to pay for you know, dates and entertainment and things if you have a job and they don't? Should you be splitting costs, things like that? So a lot of these questions might seem a little random, but they're all items that relate to expenses that you might have when you go off to school. Um, and it's good to think about these before you get there to make sure you're fully thinking about the financial picture that you'll have when you're at college. And so going into the next part, you know, as you're thinking through all those things, those are considerations that you use to go into your budget. And so you might be thinking, I'm just in high school. Why do I need to start a budget now? I'm not going to college tomorrow. But the answer is the, the earlier that you start a budget, the easier it is to be able to understand how much money you need for your goal, whether that is to pay for college, to buy a car, to go on a trip, whatever it may be. And the budget setting it up early will also help you determine how much you need to earn or save to be able to reach that goal. So there are two components to a budget. The first is income. This is your money that comes in. So this can be from wages from your job, gifts from a graduation party, allowances from your parents, etc. cetera. Um, any money that's coming in from what you're doing. And the next part is expenses. So these are the money that are going out. So expenses can be for a wide variety of things, um, transportation costs, communication costs, entertainment, personal expenses, gifts, and then the variety of school expenses that you might have when you're at college. 
And so the idea of a budget is to use those two items to make sure that you'll have enough income to pay for your expenses. So now we're going to go into steps to actually create your budget. So the first is to recognize your wants versus your needs. Because you always need to make sure that you're paying for the items that you need compared to what you want. So something to brainstorm in your classes right now is what would you consider a need? And teachers, again, feel free to pause the presentation if you'd like to discuss these in your classes. So some examples of needs in your budget would most likely be gas or transportation costs of some sort. Um, food, you know, you, you need to eat three meals a day. So your food expenses and also your housing. So whether that be, you know, dorm expenses at college or rent or utilities, bills, whatever it may be. Those are some ideas of needs. And then the other part of it is ideas of wants. So if everyone can brainstorm what some wants might be in their budget. And some examples of wants that I can think of would be going out to eat. Going out to eat, yes, you need to eat. We discussed that in the needs part. But if you go out, it can often be much more expensive than say buying groceries and cooking in. It could also be, you know, a new pair of shoes, the newest nail polish that you see in Target or the hottest video game that's out right now. Those are all things that you may want to buy, but you don't need to buy them. So it's important of recognizing the difference of those. So after you've recognized what your needs versus your wants are, the next step is to create a spending plan. And the spending plan should incorporate your needs first and then your wants, but you should always make sure at the end of the day that you're also allocating for savings. Um, because savings are important in case you have any sudden expenses or sudden loss of income. If something were to come up at college where a tire on your car broke and you needed to replace that tire, you would wanna make sure that you had some type of savings to be able to cover that, which is why it's important that, you know, every week or every month or on a routine basis, you're making sure that your budget has money going into savings as well. And then you should always be aware of spending for instant gratification. So that is most easily, I feel, relatable to online shopping. So you go on an online shopping spree, you buy a bunch of stuff, put it in your cart, charge it to a credit card. At first, you feel great. You bought all these new clothes, you get them in the mail, you try them on, they look awesome, or whatever it may be that you did your shopping spree. But then a month later, you get your credit card bill in the mail and realize that you have to pay for that. You have to pay down that bill. There's, you know, then the instant gratification kind of goes away. So, you know, again, thinking through what do you need, what do you want for those wants? Is it going to be more of an instant gratification or is it something that will actually benefit you in the long run? And then always remembering that you're allocating for savings at the end of the day. So once you've created your budget, your goal is to be able to stay on budget. So some examples of kind of staying on budget is if you start college, you know, there are certain scholarship opportunities or other opportunities where you may get a refund or a stipend for your living expenses. And so you'll want to think if you get that refund, you want to make sure that you're planning the budget out for it so that you aren't spending, say it's a refund for your full year of living expenses. If you don't plan those out, you might end up spending the whole refund in your first semester. So, you know, making sure that you're staying on budget to plan out for the full period, not just for the immediate future. Another tip to stay on budget is to see, you know, what type of events and activities your school offers for free or at a discounted price. Um, a lot of colleges, if you use a student ID, you can do a lot of activities um, for much cheaper or even free, like sporting events, concerts, things of that nature. So always keep your eye out for that. And then finally, there's always a lot of student job opportunities on college campuses. So if you feel like you need a little bit more of that income side of the budget coming in, um, always keep your eyes and ears open for job opportunities so you can earn money, but also make sure that you're managing your time so you can keep up your study habits. At the end of the day, the most important thing about college is making sure that you're staying up with your studies. Okay, so we've covered the ins and outs of budgeting. 
Um, so now we're going to do an activity to kind of get into the nitty gritty of this. So if everybody could look at the handout that you've been provided, the top of it should say, what do students spend? And teachers, you should also have a teacher version of this that has a little bit more instructions. So on this, what do students spend activity sheet, you'll see six items labeled A through F. And what we want you to do is to just fill these out, being completely honest um, for each one of them. So the first one is how often do you eat at a fast food place like McDonald's in a week? So how often are you going out to eat right now? And teachers, again, feel free to pause if students need more time filling these out or if they have questions or if you wanna walk through anything else with them. The next one is how often do you go to a movie or high school sporting event in a week? So how often are you going out with your friends to do entertainment type activities? C, how much do you pay for a monthly streaming service? So this could be Spotify, Netflix, Hulu, um, Apple Music, anything like that. If you put all those together in a month, how much are you spending on those? D. How many times are you paying for gas? And this specifies on there that it could be for yourself or it could also be for somebody else's car. So if you carpool with someone and you chip in for gas, how many times a week are you paying for that gas? And E is how much do you typically spend on a birthday gift for a friend? Um, so a close friend has a birthday and you wanna go buy them something, well, how many dollars would you typically spend on that gift? And then the last one is how much would you spend on a new outfit? So that friend that had a birthday is having a party and you want a new outfit to be able to go to that party, how much are you gonna spend on a brand new outfit? Okay, so hopefully everyone's written down answers to all of those. There are no right answers here. We're just trying to get a starting point on how you guys spend your money. Okay, so we're gonna look at a second handout now to continue the activity. This one at the top is called, What a Difference a Week Makes. So for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how you all do with a budget for a week. And this is gonna be based on the answers that you did on the first handout. So essentially, all of you guys are getting $130 to start your week off. And we're gonna see based on some items that you're gonna be paying for throughout the week, how much money you're gonna have left over at the end of the day. You'll see that this also has items A through F on the side. The second column in there has your answer at the title. So that's where you're gonna put in your answers from the first sheet. So for example, the first one is A, that's how many times you eat fast food. So if you said you eat two times, then you're gonna put two in that second column. The third column has some of the average um, costs that we're gonna assign to those. So you can see for the purposes of this activity, we're saying on average it's $8 per fast food meal. The next column, you're gonna calculate your total. So if you said you would go out to eat two times, each time costs $8. Your answer in that fourth column is going to be $16. That's how much you would be spending a week in fast food. And then the last column is where you'll keep running track of your total of how much you have left from the 130. So if you said that you'll have $16 that you're gonna spend in fast food, you would subtract that from the 130 and that remaining amount is what you would put in that last column and you would keep subtracting as you go down through each row until you get to the very bottom, which is gonna be the money left over in your pocket at the end of the week. So teachers, I'm gonna let you go ahead and pause this presentation and work through filling out the rest of the rows with your students. Um, and at the end of it, we'll come back together and we'll talk about how much everybody has left. So everyone should have completed the full activity sheet now and you should know how much money you had left in your pocket at the end of the week. Um, so first, just wanna quickly congratulate anyone who did have money left over in your pocket at the end of the week. Um, but also, if you didn't have any money left over, if you ran out along the way, that's not a big deal. This was just an activity and a way to kind of bring a budget to life and to make you guys be able to participate in a budget and learn a little bit. 
So some takeaways that teachers can discuss with their students at this point is for the people who did have money left over at the end of the week, what were some of the um, tactics that they took to make sure that they weren't spending their full amount? Um, for people who ran out of money, would there be something that they would change or something that they've learned for the future um, that they now know they need to pay a little bit more attention to? And then finally, based on this activity, you know, is there anything that you learned or that you're going to consider now as you go off to school or prepare to go off to school in order to have a successful budget? And I just want to thank you all for participating in this session with me. Hopefully you did learn a little bit about budgeting that will help you when you go off to school. And I hope you guys will have a good rest of your day. Thank you.